This is the story about the history of my life. It all began with Idi Amin, the third president of Uganda. His rule was characterized by all of the human rights abuses that he had caused. His main focus of abuse was towards other races. In regards to this, both my grandmother and grandfather were living in Uganda at the time. My grandfather was a cop and my grandmother was a seamstress, as well as being a mother of seven. One of them being my mother, who was only a child and the youngest of the age of two. Due to my grandfather's profession, he knew all about what Idi Amin was trying to do and all of his plans. At his work, there was a semi-secretive warning being passed around about how the airports are going to be shut down and no one was allowed in or out of the country. So my grandfather decided to take action with this in mind and went to go get a second copy of his, my grandmother's, my six aunts, including my mom, and my uncle's passports made. He brought them home a few days later and told my grandmother to hide them. She put them in the floorboard under my mother's bed and along with that, all of her jewelry. A few days go by and it's the weekend. Everyone is at home when suddenly there was a knock at the door. My grandfather opens it and standing there before him were two large men dressed in black holding large guns. They order to be let in the house. My grandfather takes all of the kids into the bedroom and says to them, hide under the sheets and cover your ears, close your eyes, stay silent. No matter what you hear, do not move and do not make a sound. She left the room and my mother and her sisters and her brother obeyed. Back in the living room, the men stood asking millions of questions about any passports, valuables, or anything else in the house. After saying no each time, the men finally tore apart their home and beat both my grandmother and my grandfather to try and get them to fess up to anything that they could be hiding. They kept quiet. Once the men finally left, my grandmother came to retrieve her thankfully unharmed children from the bedroom. Once out of their hiding places and back in the living room altogether, my grandfather demanded for everyone in the family to pack all of their things and to be ready to leave first thing in the morning. Before the sun was even up, my grandfather was loading up the car. My grandfather retrieves the hidden passports and jewelry from under the floor and placed it in a pillowcase that she stuffed under her dress pretending to be pregnant. The whole family gets in the car and heads towards the airport. They manage to catch one of the final flights that was leaving the country to Canada. Upon their arrival to Canada, they earned their citizenship and they lived in Thunder Bay for years. They all moved to Toronto. Currently, my grandmother still lives in Toronto with my aunt and her daughters and husband. As for the rest of my family, they are scattered across England and in Canada. Now, my mom grew up and met my dad. They graduated from the same college, got married, and had my sister and I. My dad got a job transfer, and now I'm here in Alabama. This now brings me to the conclusion of my history in my life video.